Milken and his cast of characters helped transform global finance and spawn the trillion dollar junk bond market. But the firm crashed in 1990. Milken spent 22 months in prison for illegal trades that boosted Drexel and its clients. 25 years later, the people who lived through all of it wear their Drexel career like a badge of honor, and they tell it all to Bloomberg Business. Well, Jason Kelly is here to walk us through the rise and fall of Drexel. Jason, and look, you started off the article with this uh, Ken Mullis quote, which I love, you know, Ken Mullis recounting uh, that when he first got hired, people said to him, you know, don't, uh, don't worry, maybe you'll get a real job at a real investment bank one day. I mean, Nobody knew how big this firm was going to be, right? Nobody had any idea of how big it was going to be, and no one, certainly even in 1990, had a sense that we'd even be talking about this 25 years later. It's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, it is pretty amazing. Okay, so what did, what did the folks tell you about, you know, when they recounted the 25 years, what were the highlights that came out? Right. Well, Betty, we were able to spend some pretty quality time with a lot of people who were there on the ground, in the trenches, as it were, at the X-shaped desk uh, that Michael Milken, that Michael Milken had. made yeah. famous out in, uh, out in Beverly Hills. Because he wanted to see everybody's eyes, right? He wanted to see everybody. He wanted everybody close by. He didn't want to have to turn around. And people really gravitated to him. They wanted to be near him. I mean, he really was the sort of the center of of this universe, sort of literally uh, and figuratively, and, and what they described was this really go get them entrepreneurial place. I mean, people got in, you know, Mark Adanasio, who now runs Crescent Capital, he owns the Milwaukee Brewers, you know, he's one of the sort of luminaries that, that came out of there, was talking about how in LA, you got in at, at five in the morning, not 501, you got in at five, or sorry, the day started at five, you had to get in by 430. <laughs> Michael Milken was there at 330. So, I mean, this is how it started. Clients would show up and, and the roster that they had of clients, you know, these are brand names that, that we all know. Well, they are. Let's talk about that, Jason, because Michael Milken, we now know, of course, he's head of the Milken Institute, right. uh, and he's had this comeback. But, but talk to us about some of the other, you know, alumni, essentially. Sure. Well, it, it's interesting. When, when you look at the people who were involved, you know, there's sort of these two sets. There are the, the people who came out like Ken Mullis, Mark Adonacio, Leon Black, Gary Winnick, and others who worked there, who went on to these great careers. Um, but also, remember that Back in the 1980s, nobody really knew who Carl Icahn was or Nelson Peltz or Boone Pickens. Mm. And these were the people who really benefited. Steve Wynn, Kirk Kerkorian. John Malone. John Malone. All these guys. Ted Turner. I mean, these were the people who Milken and Drexel really put on the map yeah, through, the, through the invention or through the, um, the really use of high yield bonds or, or junk bonds. Well, I was going to say, so the firm no longer exists and it, it crashed, but the junk bond market is largely a result of what Drexel, Drexel did, right? That's absolutely right. I mean, what they essentially did was they opened up the market. Um, they, and and what, what people told us as we were talking to them was that up until that point, finance was really binary. You were either investment grade or non-investment grade. And what somebody told me as, as we were talking through this was that this created this spectrum of risk. And so you could match up buyers and sellers, but, you know, buyers and issuers. And so suddenly companies that couldn't get finance before were able to get money. And it also gave fuel to these guys that we've been talking about, yes. Pickens and others, who could all of a sudden raise money to do these big takeovers. 